Okay, guys, so this is the lesson four, and in this lesson, we're going to discuss about the, the peripheral devices. Okay, so let's begin the class. Okay, so peripheral devices are the devices that we uh, that can be connected to a computer, such as PC or a tablet device. Okay, so these are all the devices are called the peripheral devices. For example, we have the mouse, keyboard, microphone, speakers, all those devices, uh, we, we call them peripheral devices. Peripheral devices can be connected inside or outside of a computer and can be grouped into three types. So there are three types of uh, the peripheral devices. Okay, we can group different devices into three groups. The first one, we have input devices, we have output devices, and the last one is the storage devices. Okay, so so, so let's, let's summarize everything. So peripheral devices are the devices that we connect to the computer. Okay, so the, those devices can be connected inside the computer or maybe outside okay so and we can group those devices into three categories number one we have the input output and the storage okay so now in this class we discuss the input devices what are input devices so this is input devices and what are input devices <coughs> so input, input peripheral are devices that send data to the computer so every device that send data to the computer is called the input device or input peripheral so for example we have the the microphone microphone send the data to the computer we have the mouse mouse also send data to computer we have scanner scanner also send data similarly we have controller and joystick and these are the some example of uh, input peripheral so uh, these devices allow the user to control the computer or store data captured from the sources outside of the system so what does it mean by that capture data uh, from the sources outside of the system this means like for example some microphone microphone capture our sound right and then send that sound to the computer so this means it capture data outside of the computer and send that data to the computer and then computer can process that data we can do different things with, with that data okay so this is all about the the definition of the what are peripheral devices and what are the input peripheral devices specifically Okay, so the first type of uh, input peripheral is called the keyboard. Okay, so keyboard are used, uh, key, keyboard, uh, uh, keyboard use button known as keys. Okay, so all the button on the keyboard known as keys, which user presses to input text or interact with the software. So you can press the keys from the keyboard to input text, or maybe you can uh, use the combination of the different keys to send shortcuts, like like, like as a shortcut and uh, and send command to different uh, softwares install on your laptop. So keyboards send data to computer either using wired or wireless connection. So there are two types of uh, keyboards. Okay, one is the wired that you just connect using the USB uh, USB port, and other one is the wireless like using the Bluetooth. So there are two types of keyboards. Okay, so they can send data to computer in two methods. One is wired, second one is the wireless method. Different types of keyboard are used for different operating system, language, and functions. Okay, there are different types of keyboards. Next one is the combination of key press allow the user to access common features command uh, like uh, uh, called shortcuts. So like if you you combine the different keys, that we call them shortcut. For example, we have the Control plus C or Command plus C. That is the shortcut for copying text, right? So Control Z, Control V. We have different shortcuts that we use in our everyday life. So these combination of keys when we press, they are called shortcuts. So next, there is another term is called the touch typing. So what is touch typing? Touch typing involves typing without looking at the keys. This speed up the data entry. Okay, so when you uh, every, everybody type, right? So if you type without looking at the keyboard, that is called the touch typing. It means you are just looking at the screen. You're typing with your hand. Your hand knows which key is where, and uh, th that thing is called the touch typing. So how can you learn that thing? There are different softwares, and you can also practice. Okay, so you can learn touch typing. And what is the benefit of uh, learning touch typing? It can increase your typing speed. Okay, so if you look uh, look at the keyboard and find each key, it means your typing speed is slow. Okay, so next input device uh, is called the pointing device or pointing devices because there are so many devices. Okay, so so a pointer, so pointer. You can see this 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 arrow. Okay, this is called the pointer. A pointer is used on screen to select displayed object. Okay, uh, there are several types of uh, de uh, of devices that allow you to control the pointer. So there are different types of devices that allow us to control that pointer. Okay, so let's discuss them. First one is the mouse. Okay? This is very obvious, right? Everybody use mouse. So um, a mouse, a mouse uses an optical sensor to uh, recognize the movement of the device. So you move the the mouse on on some surface, and then that movement is determined the the location of the cursor on the screen. Okay, so this is also called the cursor or pointer. So uh, it is sens uh, its sensitivity can be affected by the surface upon which it is placed. So mouse sensitivity sensitivity can be uh, affected. Okay, so if you, that's why you need to use the the mouse pad. Okay, so mouse pad surface is um, made for the mouse. So you can use the mouse on on the mouse pad to smoothly control the cursor. So uh, some uh, some mouse or, or mice uses the roller ball to control the movement of the the the, the pointer. So there are two types of now uh, we can see there are two types of mouse. One is the optical mouse which uses the optical light, and the second one is the this one. This one uses the ball. Okay, so this type of mouse are old. 
or this one okay this one is the, the ball and this one is has the optical light okay so how you control the pointer using this mouse this has a small ball inside this one so when you you move it on some surface the ball moves and there are some rollers okay around this one so based on the movement of those rollers you can control so no, nowadays we don't use this type of mouse but in old days we often use we only have this type of uh, mouse okay so this is a new type is called the laser mouse or the optical mouse okay so this is also another type of mouse Okay, so the trackball, there's another type of uh, the pointing device is called the trackball. Okay, so we have mouth. Next one is called the trackball. These are all the pointing devices. Trackball. A trackball is a rolled to the, uh, tra uh, a trackball is rolled to move the pointer. Okay, it does not have button to press. So this is the thing. Okay, so you can just put it anywhere on any surface. You just need to roll the, the ball to control the movement of the, 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 the cursor or the pointer. Next device is a pointing device is called the, the trackpad. Okay, so trackpad uh, surface sense the finger movement touch and pressures okay so this is you can you, you can see all of the the laptops uh, have the built-in uh, uh, trackpad or touchpad okay so you just move your finger on, on the trackpad and then you can control the, the movement of the mouse you can even uh, press press the touch uh, press the trackpad to perform different operations for example right click left click so this is also uh, called the, the pointing device so we have the pointing devices there are three types of pointing devices one is called the mouse then we have the trackpad and then the the, the third one is called the, the track one okay so just keep in mind and the mouse we have two types one is the laser mouse second one is the mouse with the ball okay so uh, next pointing device is called the joystick okay so joysticks are commonly used on the game controller to to uh, to move spirit around the game so you can use uh, those uh, joysticks to control the movement of the, the player okay inside the game and uh, next uh, the pointing device is called the graphic graphics graphics tablet okay a graphic tablet is a flat pad that utilized uh, with the stylus so you have a stylus this this pen is called the stylus okay so user uses stylus to draw and write on it usually used by the artist and the designer so this type of uh, devices are very useful for example for the teachers for example if they're teaching them teaching math so they can just uh, write something on it and that thing will be shown on the screen okay so maybe if someone is interest, interested in the arts so they can also use the, this type of uh, graphic uh, graphics tablet okay so you need to connect that tablet to the laptop and then whatever you do on the t t tablet this tablet it will appear on the the screen so there are two types also one is with the screen and one is without the screen for example this pad is without screen there is there is no screen but there is another type which is more expensive which mirrored the laptop screen so whatever you see on the laptop you can also see on the tablet okay and you have the same functionality you have the stylus you can draw you can write so it's, it's up to you which one is uh, which one is more comfortable for you okay so next type of input device is called the scanner uh, including the ocr and omr okay so what are scanners scanners use light sensor to record physical document as image which are then saved as file to the computer so for example if you have a, some some physical document that you want to to make a, a digital version of that that, that that document so what you need to do you need to put that document inside the scanner scanner is scan scanning mean taking picture of that image and then you will see that picture inside your laptop so that is what what a scanner is so scanner use a light to scan the image okay and give you the digital version of that image so software allows scanners to read character on the document and store the result into a text file known as OCR. So what is OCR? OCR stands for Optical Corrector Recognition Software. So these software allow the allow you to read the, the text from the image. Okay. So for example, if you have an image with a text, you cannot copy the text. You cannot delete the text from that image, right? So using the OCR, you can copy the text from the image. Okay. So uh, uh, image uh, is different from the file. From file, you can copy, cut, paste, okay, do different things on the text, okay. But if you have an image, okay, you can you can try, you can just take an image of a text and then try to copy. A uh, newer version of the phones, they have the built-in OCR, but the, the, the older version of the phone, they don't have, when you take a picture, you cannot copy the, the text from the, the image. So how you capture the, uh, the text from the image, you use the OCR. There's some uh, software in the app store you can download or like to, to use the OCR. Next one is the OMR or optical mark recognition. Okay, so what is this? This is device. This device is called the optical mark recognition or OMR. So this type of software can also be used with scanners to detect simple mark on documents. So uh, if you have some simple marks on documents, you can use this device to detect those marks. So when where we use those devices, so a common use of OMR is for recognizing and recording responsive to the multiple choice test. For example, if you go for the IGCSE test, right? So you you write your answer on a sheet. So how they check your answers? So they just put that thing inside the OMR, and OMR will automatically give you the scores based on the the, the circles that you have chosen. Okay. So that's all about the scanners. Next one is called the barcode scanner. So what is a barcode scanner? So a barcode. What is, first of all, what is a barcode? A barcode is a pattern of line and gaps that can be read by the barcode scanner. Okay. So which detects the width of the lines and gaps in a, a, a gaps in a, a barcode. So this is the barcode okay so you can see you have a different lines and there are different gaps some lines are small some lines are thick and they also have some number and alphabet here 
So this is called the barcode. So a device that can read data from those codes is called the barcode scanner or barcode reader. Okay. So the uh, barcodes are often used on the parcels uh, so that they can be tracked and on items for sale in shops. So for example, you go to a shop. So when you want to buy something, you give it to the, the owner of the, the shop and then he used the, the barcode scanner to scan to know the price and other information about that product. Okay, so barcodes are usually used on the products that you buy from the, the markets and also uh, on the parcels. For example, if you buy something from Taobao or maybe Amazon and uh, they also use the barcode to track that package. Okay, so the barcode uh, represent letters and numbers with uh, which are used to identify the items. So based on those letters and numbers, uh, the barcode scanner can identify the product. Okay, so there are two types of barcodes. Okay, so number one is the linear barcode and the second one is the matrix. So this is the linear. Okay, this this barcode is called the linear barcode. So now let's see what is a matrix barcode. Okay, so matrix code are the, also known as QR codes. QR means a quick response code. Okay, so. Uh, they are newer than the linear barcode and have some advantages over the linear barcode such as they can hold much more information than the linear barcode and second advantage is they can be scanned from any angle so you can scan the the, uh, the, the QR code from any angle up down left right okay next input device is called the webcam so uh, webcam are specialized cameras they are cameras okay but we call them webcam uh, they are generally lower quality than the camcorder and they have built in microphone to, to capture the sound so this is the, the quality of those those cameras okay so they can they can be used as security cameras and stream images or the videos to the internet. So why we call them the, the webcam? Because we usually use those cameras to stream videos online. For example, uh, for, if you want to make a, a video call from your laptop, so you can use the webcam. Okay? So some laptops have the built-in cameras and some you need to buy the external cameras and connect it via the USB port. So webcams are used when you are having the online classes, online meeting, making video call, or maybe streaming the videos uh, on, on some, some video uh, video website, okay? for example, YouTube. So if you are streaming something, so you also use the webcams. Next input device is called the microphone. The microphone is used to capture sound. Okay, as you know, it's used to capture sound. Uh, it uses diaphragm, which moves the air, hits it. Okay, the movement of uh, the, the this movement produces an analog electrical signal. Okay, so it produces an analog signal. Just keep in mind. Okay, so how we convert the analog signal to the digital one? So a microphone convert the electrical signal to the digital signal with sound card. So this is called this device is called the sound card, which converts the analog signal to the digital one because computer can only understand the binary, right? Zero and one. So it, it doesn't understand the, the analog thing. So for, to make the, the computer understand this, what is inside the sound, we need to convert that sound to the digital one. So how we convert that sound to the digital one, we use the, the sound, sound, sound card. So sound card act as the analog to digital converter. So that's all about the microphone. Next input uh, device is called the touchscreen. Touchscreens are used in many devices, including smartphones, tablet devices, laptops, and desktop computers. So there are many use of those uh, touchscreens. So there are two types of uh, touchscreens. Number one, we have the resistive touchscreen, and second one is the capacitive uh, touchscreen. So now let's discuss the, those in details. Okay. So a touchscreen, and first one, we're going to discuss the resistive touchscreen. So when a user presses on a resistive screen, the pressure caused two layers underneath the screen to touch uh, to touch and make a connection okay so when you touch so you can see in this picture uh, you need to make a connection here and then you, you touch signal will go uh, this uh, this screen are more durable than the capacitive touch screen but are harder to read to, to, to read because more layers reflect more light okay? so this is not easy to read the data from those those, those touch screens in addition they can they can only recognize one touch at a time so they are not suitable for the multi touch of the application for example on your phone you can use the you can use multi, multiple fingers to do different gestures right to perform different actions so on those type of screen uh, resistive screen you can only touch one okay so you, you cannot uh, use the two fingers or four fingers okay or pinch or something like that you cannot do that those things on the, the resistive touch screens okay and the next type of touch screen is called the capacitive touch screen so uh, here you can see in the diagram this is the working of the capacitive touch screen so under the glass of capacitive touch screen there is a layer of capacitive material okay and when a user touches the screen, a small amount of charge flows away fr from their fingers because humans are conductive. Okay? So uh, the, uh, the, the change in the electric charge is measured precisely. The closer the finger is to the charged area, the more current flow away. Okay? So this is how the basic working of those uh, touch screens. Uh, this allows the computer to calculate the precise location of, uh, of, uh, at which the screen was touched and capacitive screens serve uh, screens are often used in the smartphone so your smartphone your ipad your iphone your android phone all of the the the, the, the touch screen phone they use the capacitive touch screens next input device uh, we call them the biometric scanner so biometric scanners measure a user's unique physical characteristics several times until a suitable average result is produced so that, that's all about the, the biometric scanner okay so the average result is then saved and compared to the future samples to determine if a person is being scanned is authorized or not 
So uh, this allows the, the information to be updated so that the saved sample is perfected. Okay, so so how the, the biometric scanner works, for example, we have the different biometric scanners, for example, we have the, the fingerprint, we have the face scanner. So what we do when we use them the fir for the first time? For the first time, we need to give them the sample of our, for example, fingerprint scanner. Okay, we talk, let's talk about the fingerprint scanner. So for the first time, when we try to use those scanners, we need to give our fingerprint to the scanner. Okay, so we need to uh, press our finger on the scanner for the several time, and then when it says done, so it's mean it captured all the, the, the sample from our finger. And the next time, when you try to touch the button, okay, or touch the sensor, it automatically unlock the phone uh, based on your uh, new finger okay so the first type of uh, uh, biometric scanner is called the finger recognition okay so what is finger recognition this scanner read the pattern of uh, of arches loops and holes in human finger uh, fingerprints so mm, it can read the different loops and arches uh, from our fingers okay and based on those uh, things the loops and arches they can identify the correct person okay so the fingerprints are unique to each person which makes them a valuable method of identification so every person on the planet have a unique fingerprint so that's why we can use the fingerprints to identify someone so but fingerprints can be uh, uh of score okay or damage or chain uh, such as by injury or disease so yeah, as you can see in the picture so this person got some problem with her uh, finger so it means he cannot use the, the fingerprint okay so that is why we can say that this method is not very good for everyone Next type of uh, is uh, next type of input uh, device or the it's called the facial recognition software. So these scanners okay, identify the structure of the human face in order to identify an, an, an individual. Okay, so we use uh, we use those uh, scanner to scan our face for the first time, and then next time when you want to unlock the phone or laptop, you just need to sh uh, show your face to that device, and it will automatically unlock the, the the device. Next one is the voice recognition. Okay, so uh, these scanner require a microphone to capture the voice. So you need to say a few words, a few letters, or some phrases for the first time. It captures your sound, your pitch, okay, your depth, everything. And then next time uh, when you want to log in, it asks you to say something. And when you read it based on your past data, it can open that device. Okay, so uh, they can capture the voice print against uh, against a saved original and check to see whether two uh, two prints match. Okay, so if they match, then they open the open the device. Next type of uh, is input is called the iris recognition. Okay, so next type of biometrics scanner is type of iris scanner. So what is iris scanner? So the like fingerprint, uh, human iris has a unique pattern. So like as we said, like the, every person have a unique fingerprint, right? So similarly, uh, every person have a unique iris. Okay, um, uh, on the iris scan is uh, is a, 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 so the iris iris scan is approximately one twenty times more detailed than the fingerprint. So that's why we can say that the iris scan is much more better than uh, much more better than the, the fingerprint. So uh, this means that the RS recognition is 120 times more reliable uh, than identifying the people. So RS scan is more reliable than identifying people compared to the, the fingerprint scan. So here is the basic how the, the RS recognition software works. Okay? So you can see the image and you can see uh, this is not important for exam. So I'm skipping this one. But you can pause the video and you can just see how this thing works. Okay. Okay, so now let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of the, the biometric scanner. Okay, so the, first let's talk about the advantages. So easier for the user than the password because biometric data cannot be uh, forgotten. So for example, if you use the password, so maybe you forgot the password. So or maybe if you use the same password for for, for all of your accounts, which so means uh, if your one account is compromised, your all account will be compromised, right? The hacker can hack all of your accounts. So this is the one advantage. More difficult to trick or confuse biometric scanners. Uh, than some other methods so yeah it's not easy to trick the the biometric scanner uh, it can speed up the transaction so for example if you're paying the money instead of uh, typing the password you just show your face or you just use your fingerprint it's much more faster right and are not restricted by language barriers so there is no language thing so you have a face your fingerprint is this is acceptable everywhere uh, now, let's, now let's talk about the disadvantages so the the, the, the cause the privacy and the security concern because Detailed personal information is stored electronically. So some people think that is not uh, very good because uh, they are giving their vital information to someone else. For example, if you use the, the Apple, right? So in Apple, you need to store your fingerprint in Apple device. So yeah, we don't know. Uh, Apple, Apple have access to your fingerprints, your face. So if some people think this is against the privacy. Uh, possible to trick or confuse them. So it is also possible to trick or confuse them. For example, uh, there are so many videos on the internet you can watch the, how they trick the, the facial recognition software. Uh, by by showing the picture okay of the person or maybe you can also create the fake uh, fingerprint so there's, there's so many ways you can also check on the internet next one is expensive to make and buy so it's very expensive you need to buy a specialist uh, device okay so which is which will, which will add extra cost right and also it makes uh, some people feel uncomfortable so it's also not comfortable for some people they don't want to uh, give their personal uh, fingerprints or the facial face id 
to someone else. Okay, so these are the some disadvantages and advantages of the, the biometric scanners. Next input device is called the card readers. Okay, so what are the card readers? Card readers are used to read data stored on a card that is carried by a user. Okay, so the the, the data can be used to unlock door, access secure areas, make payment or track people, parcels and even pattern animals. So there are different types of card that we can use to do different things, right? Next one is the card reader can carry data using three methods. So there are three methods uh, the cards can carry data. So what are those three methods? Number one, we have the RFID or NFC. Then we have the programmable chips. And then next one is the magnetic strip card. So these are three different types of magnetic, uh, the, the type of the card readers. Okay, so the, what is the programmable chip? So data on a programmable chip is only uh, readable when the correct pin is entered into the reader. So you first need to set the card and then you need to uh, enter the pin code and when the pin code is correct, the data can be read from those cards. Okay. Uh, next one is the magnetic strip card. So data on the ma magnetic strip uh, can be easily stolen by hackers. Okay. So who put the card through, uh, through a card reader without the owner's knowledge. So they can just bring their card reader near to that uh, magnetic card. For example, if someone is holding his magnetic card in his, his, his uh, um, bag, okay, so the, the hacker can just go, go uh, just walk, walk from, from near to him with the card reader and he can read the data from that is his card, okay. So that is why uh, this is the least secure method. Next one, we have the RFID and NFC. RFID uh, stands for the radio frequency identification. Uh, RFID is the short range wireless communication method. And NFC, NFC stands for the near field communication and it is a, a, a branch of the RFID. So RFID tags are cheap and small, and they can be included in a, in a variety of objects, such as the, the cards and key forbs and smartphones. So you can see here, there are different uses of those um, uh, card cards, okay? So they contain unique identification number or ID that is linked to the uh, uh, recorder in a database. So you can use those, uh, those NFC or RFID to unlock the doors or maybe uh, payment maybe in the, the uh, users in the bus cards, okay? So there are several uses of those, those cards. So here's an exam question, explain why NFC speeds up the payment process. So the possible answer is user can scan, tap their card and do not have to insert their uh, their card and do not have to enter their pin code. This is the one first reason. Second one is because NFC is a contactless pay payment method. So that is the, the answer for that, this question. Okay. So this is the exam question. Uh, next input devices, we call them the sensors. Okay, so sensors are used to input data about the physical environment. Okay, so if you want to capture the data from the physical environment, we use the sensors. Okay, so they can be they, they can automatically input data without the need of human interaction. So you don't need any human interaction. They can automatically capture data and send it to the the, the, the computer. Uh, their output is then processed by the computer, and sensors are one of the main feature of the most smartphone. Uh, devices such as smartphone and uh, the smart environment such as the smart home. So in smart homes and smartphone, we use uh, we use a lot of sensors. Okay. So let's talk about the benefit of the sensors. Uh, they can be placed in remote or the dangerous places. They can uh, they, they they can mon uh, and they can monitor continuously. Okay. They don't stop. Uh, they can remove the possibility of human error because if the human um, records something, maybe he makes a mistake. But those sensors don't make any mistake. Okay. Uh, they can sense things that people cannot. For example, they can sense the changes in the pressure or the gas level, etc. Okay, so the data is easily or sometimes automatically converted to the digital form. So those are the some benefit of the sensors. Okay, so now let's talk about the the, the types, different types of sensors. So there are many different types of sensors to allow for uh, for the monitoring uh, of a range of environment factors. For example, we have the light sensor, which monitors light, pressure sensor, temperature sensors. We have the proximity and distance sensors, usually used in the phone. We have the moisture and humidity sensors, and the last we have the motion and movement sensors. So that's all uh, we're done with the input devices. In the next lesson, we'll discuss the output devices. So, see you. Bye.